All right, I used one of my favorite words when I typed this problem. I love it. And you'll probably never see this word on the AP test because it's just such a bizarre word. Let's keep reading. Find two numbers. Final answer will be two numbers. Column X and Y, column A and B, column whatever you want. I'm gonna use A and B because I'm just kind of tired of using X and Y. Whose sum is 40. Let's just stop right there. That actually tells us the first formula. There are gonna be two formulas, something I know and something I don't. And here's what I know. I have two numbers. A and B, X and Y, M and N, whatever. Their sum is 40. And that is what I know. Here's what I don't know. And when you read, you'll realize what you don't know. Adding the square of the first number to, <laughs> I love this word, thrice. <laughs> that means three times. Thrice the square of the second number yields the minimum possible value. What is that value? We don't know. And that's it. We don't know. We didn't know the area here. We didn't know the area here. We don't know the minimum possible value. What do you want to call it? I'm going to call it M for minimum. Okay? Don't panic. You've done this. We would love to take the derivative of this, but we have an A and we have a B and things get complicated and let's not. So let's not. Um, what I am going to do, however, is solve for one of these. Either one, it doesn't matter. I'm going to solve for A because I feel like it. You're going to get the same answer either way. A equals 40 minus B. And so we're going to have 40 minus B, and it is squared. There we go. Plus 3B squared equals some minimum value. I don't know what the minimum value is. They actually didn't ask what that value was. Don't know. Who cares? But what I'm ready to do now is take a derivative. Do you want to foil that out? You could if you want to. I choose not to. I, instead, I'm going to just take the derivative of that using the chain rule. So 2 times this inner part, so 40 minus b, then to the first. And then we multiply by the derivative of that inner part, which is negative 1, and then plus 6b, and that's equal to m. Okay. Well, let's keep going. At this point, we can really distribute, so or really simplify. 80 minus 2b times negative 1, so let's change some signs, and then plus 6b, and that's equal to m. So negative 80 plus 8b equals m. So we, oh, we took the derivative. Uh, no. All right, m prime, m prime, m prime. There we go. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, from here to here, we took a derivative, so we have to make the, make sure that's in there. And we're ready to set the derivative equal to 0, so negative 80 plus 8b equals 0, b is 10. All right, well, that's fantastic. If b is 10, final answer, find two numbers, there's one of them. Here's the other one, 40 minus 10. Go ahead and put 30, but I wanted to show you where it came from. That's it. Now, what is that minimum number? Don't know. Do you want to know? Sure, why not? Here it is, just in case you care. The minimum number would be 30 squared plus 3 times 10 squared, which is 1,200, and that is the lowest it'll get. Do we know we found a minimum? Well, it didn't ask, but I'm going to demonstrate. So if you're like, man, I got this, then just, you know, cut the video here. But I want to demonstrate very quickly that we actually found the minimum value. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. we got, uh, what, 10? So, the minimum value is a function of B. Could be a function of A, but that's what we saw for. Um, I'm going to, they didn't say restrict it to positive numbers, but I am going to play in the positive numbers right now. <clears throat> so, we would plug, yep, it's going to work, it's going to work. Can I tell you in a minute how I know it's going to work? I will tell you. All right, let's plug numbers into the derivative, which is negative 80 plus 8b in this case. And we'll plug numbers in from each interval, so like 9 and 11. And we got the minimum value, the derivative, was negative here and oops, positive here. And here's how I kind of knew how to do that in my head, and, and this is the fun part. This is a line, right, with a positive slope, so I know it's increasing. And if it, if it is 0 at 10, this is 10 right here, that dot right there is 10, then the derivative, this line, has to be negative here and positive here. 
So with this line being positive slope, negative here, positive here, we truly did find a minimum. Just saying.